let's take a quick look at taking a sequenced MIDI part that has a natural feel that's unquantized and take that into a notation view that's legible for musicians. And we actually kind of look at our part here. We can see that if we zoom in that the keyboard player was a little bit ahead of the beat there. And if we kind of zoom in again, we can see that's ahead of the beat. But this is actually intentional to have the feel of the part. And we could also have kind of natural inflections, such as that, like the rolling of the chord. So when we look at this into, so we like the natural musical feel of this. So we have it feeling really good, but when we go into our notation view, it often looks like total gibberish like this. Now, if I want to take this notation and make it legible, most of the hidden features are found right here in your score settings. So you see this little icon just to the left of the first staff. And as I come right over here, I double click on that. And I'll choose first off that I want it to be in the key of A flat. We can choose our key directly here. If I'm doing orchestral transposition for different instruments, I could have it for clarinet, B flat trumpet, F horn, as well as alto tenor sax. If I wanted to come here, now as I do that, I want to do a display quantize. And what I'm gonna do here is as I have my display quantize, I say the smallest rhythmic note that I played or intended to see in this example was an eighth note. And the smallest rhythmic rest I intended was a quarter note. Uh, and I'm gonna to choose to consolidate my rest. Perhaps my fingers were held over a little longer, no overlaps, and perhaps I was swinging. Now. The clef here we have for treble clef. If it's a piano part, we're going to want it to be a grand staff. So we'll choose split under our polyphonic tab and we'll split it at C3, which is pretty standard. And now in just a matter of seconds, I could take this and we could take our mute gibberish notation, click apply, and now it's automatically been transcribed into something that's very legible. Now I could also come right over here and store this as a preset. So let's say I want to store, and I could just say I want this for every time I have a Rhodes part. And now that's stored as a preset, so I don't have to go through and do all these settings again. Now one of the other things that's very handy, especially for lead sheet generation, is the ability to have automatic chord generation. So if I wanted to come here, I could go to my edit menu, I can select all the notes, and then we'll have this little C7 icon right here. And what that'll do is automatically figure out a chord analysis for us and lay out the chords for us in our example. So very easy for our chord generation. Now we're gonna have a plethora of symbols available here. So if I wanted to have even my note expressions, or different articulations, dynamics, these could be dragged and dropped directly onto our project. If I wanted to add lyrics, and I could come right over here, and now I could type in the lyrics and hit my tab key, and that will take me to my next note for me automatically. Now, one of the other handy scoring features is going to be the layout tool. So as I come right over here, I could now access not only my object selection tool, but a dedicated layout tool. So let's say, for instance, I wanted this E flat to be a little more visually to the left. If I come here and use my object selection tool, what that'll do is actually move the note rhythmically. And I didn't want to change the actual notation, I just want to change the visual aspect of it. So if I grab my layout tool, all of my elements can be just moved independently. So if I want a little more space in that bar, or if I want to do something like indent, I could come right over here, and just indent. Now we could also have some additional tools which are handy. So if I wanted to grab my glue tool, if I wanted to have more staves on a particular line, I could come right over here, grab my glue tool. Or if I wanted to kind of separate it out, you could grab my scissors tool and just kind of cut right there and have all of my staves. And as I come over here, we could also use our layout tool to make our staff lines closer. If I hold down 
my control key, I could do that. Or if I want more space between all the staffs, I could do that by holding down my Alt or Option key. Now, once we're done with this, we can not only come over here and choose to export our score as a graphic file, but we could also import and export music XML files. So if you're working with dedicated notation programs, this way all the layout and uh, scoring and symbols are automatically translated over, which usually don't get carried over in a standard MIDI file. So as you can see, in just a matter of minutes, you can take what was illegible notation for a part that had a great musical feel and turn it into musical notation that could be printed out and shared with musicians in Cubase.